What we're going to do today is dangerous and could injure or kill you. If you are uncomfortable or unsure of working with high voltage electricity, please do not attempt to replicate anything you see here. Hey, what's happening guys? We're getting in the parts to build the amplifier and the first part we got in here is this big giant transformer with multiple windings. It has a high voltage winding, it has two filament windings, and what it doesn't have is any instructions or diagrams, so we've got to figure it out. We're going to assume that like pairs of wires go together. We're going to test it, we're not just going to assume. So. Let's start with what I believe are the primary wires, which are the smaller pair of black wires. And we're seeing I'm looking for voltage. Paul, you big dummy. Two and a half ohms. I expected to see closer to four ohms, but you know, this is unknown vintage. So we will say the Textured black are the primary. That's what I'm guessing. I'm going to mark them with a P. Next, I want to look at the reds. We have th three reds, or you could say two reds and an orange. I'm also guessing the reds are our high voltage winding, which, if that is the case, they will have the highest. 120 ohms, okay. And what about halfway? 60. And I said, let's do this. We did that one and that one. Do this one and this one. 60. 60, okay. So red is probably HV with a center tap. So I will just mark the reds H, so we can assume they are the high voltage. That leaves us with this set of heavy duty black wires, which are probably a filament winding. Because it's going to carry a little bit of current, so they put heavier wires. See, 0.3 ohms, we'll call this the HD black, that's probably a filament winding. And then we also have the yellow wires, which read about the same. So they're probably also a filament winding. Now, one thing you can do to be absolutely careful is when you're checking windings, go through each individual set here. Make sure nothing else touches anything else that's always a good thing okay so now that we're kind of got an idea of what's what I'm going to attach a line cord to what I believe to be the primary and we're going to use the variac back here in the corner to uh, to test that out be right back when I get the line cord hooked up. All right, we got our meter set for voltage. I'm going, we've got our line cord hooked up to what I believe to be the primary. Going to connect what I believe to be the high voltage secondary, and you will notice that I have insulated all the other wires so that nothing can touch anything else. Because even though we're not always safety first here, we are always stupid last and to leave unconnected wires well that's just stupid all right power up the variac on low power and you can see we are getting 18 volts from what I believe to be our high voltage we'll run this up here about 40 volts or so we're getting 232 volts up to household power 
and we're getting 366.5 volts. So yes, boys and girls, that is our high voltage. I have switched the Variac off. I have unplugged the line cord. And we now know what our high voltage is. So we will now insulate those. And we will move on to a different winding. Uh, what else should we check? The black? All right. Now the black, I believe, has a center tap. So we'll hook up the black pair. Very X all the way down. Plug in our line cord, power up. 122 millivolts, 0.7 volts. 1.7 and we'll get her up to line voltage so that the black is probably our 5 volt filament unplug the variac turn it off disconnect here and I'm going to mark that with a 5 and that is the 5 volt center tap. Alright, let's insulate those. And we'll check our yellow winding, which should give us somewhere around 6.3 volts. And there's no no center tap on those. All right, we got that plugged in. Then we'll plug in our line cord, variax all the way down, power it up, and I will start cranking up the variac. And when we get to somewhere around line voltage, where are we at there? 6.3. Power off the Variac. Disconnect the line cord. Now we're safe. Then we can touch here. There's no capacitors anywhere to hold anything. So once you unplug it, we're safe. Mark these at 6.3. And now we know what each of the windings on our transformer are. Let me uh, disconnect. Come on. Yeah, you know, generally electrical tape don't want to stay on unless you don't want it to. Then it doesn't want to go. There we go. Let's disconnect this line cord. Because this was just for testing purposes and we don't want to accidentally plug this in, you know, if we've been uh, drinking or anything like that. Ooh. All right. So, that was $25 well spent as opposed to spending like $174 to get one from JJ Tubes or something like that. Now some of the other parts of the amp that have come in are this nice aluminum chassis, our high voltage capacitors, our tubes, 1 watt resistors, and these nice Nutric tube sockets. So we're waiting on a couple other things that should be in by next week. And then we'll start putting it together, but we do need to uh, finish up our video on the schematic and how it all goes together. So we'll do that one day later this week. That's enough for today, don't you think? I think. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. Wash them hands. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. Dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.